Okay guys, we are back and this is the second video uh, of how I paint multicam. The previous video I showed you how I do base coats and this video is going to start going over the highlights, bringing up the highlights more of the uniform and the web gear so that we are then ready to do the actual uh, camouflage pattern. Uh, now what it's going to look like that these colors, these highlight colors, are going to be a lot whiter, um, and a lot more highlighted. And the reason why is when I apply the washes, the shades, that will tone down those highlights, which is fine. So uh, it will take care of it. Don't worry. It's something that I, you know, have been testing myself and had to get used to. Uh, so. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Now, the first video I showed you guys, I have a cheapy craft brush, which I use for all my base coating. It, uh, they're great brushes, uh, but they're really cheap. You can buy a pack of these, of, I think 10 of these, for like $3, $4, maybe at Hobby Lobby. When I start getting into my detail work, uh, I will use my uh, Windsor Newton Series 7 brushes. They're great brushes. I've had these, some of these brushes for several years, uh, and they will last if you take care of them. This brush is a size one, and I'm gonna use that again just to paint the highlights. I'm not gonna use this to actually paint the camouflage. I have a different size brush. Actually, I have just a brush that I only use for camouflage painting, and when I'm done painting camouflage, it goes back in its tube. So I, I, I have that camouflage brush so it maintains the point and maintains the tip. Okay, so this time what I'm gonna use for the, the first, going back to the first highlight, is just the base color Old Wood. That's it. Vallejo, or Vallejo Panzer Aces Old Wood. So I'm going to just do a drop of that here on my trusty plastic palette. And I'm going to add some thinner medium, stir that up, get it nice and uh, mixed up. So this should be thin. Let's see. Let's see how thin this is. No, oh, this is fun. Painting with this camera in front of me is really fun. Okay, so I'm going to just start hitting the main highlights here of the of the the edges where the light's hitting the most. I'm not doing a lot of work on it because, thankfully, because of the pre-shading uh, and uh, you know the the first base coats, a lot of that stuff's already done for us. I'm just kind of going back to tying it in a little bit more. So what I'm going to do here is on the camera just kind of show you what I'm doing and then I'll pause it and do the whole figure and I'll show you what it looks like after it dries and then moving on to the next highlighted color. But basically that's all I'm doing. I'm taking the brush and just lightly going over the raised areas and I'm just going to do it on the uniform first, and then I will do the same thing on the web gear, the plate carrier, and all the pouches and stuff. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I applied the first highlighted color again, which is the base old wood, and I let dry. It, it's kind of hard to, to see on this camera because I didn't really go extreme with the highlights for the first for the first color. But now what I'm going to do is add some more, uh, a different lighter color to my old wood. And uh, then you'll see the difference start to occur with the getting lighter. And uh, again, what I'm trying to do is just hit these, these edges here and bring out where the light's hitting the most. So going back to my trusty handy palette, what I'm doing now is I'm using Vallejo Dark Sand. And I'm going to just apply it straight to the Panzer Aces color that I have on the palette. OK, 
Okay. And then I will take a drop of water. And then another drop of the Liejo Thinner Medium. Okay. Now I'm going to stir it up, mix it up. And we should start to see quickly a change. Yeah, look at that. That's definitely a change. Now, sometimes you think, oh my God, that's too, too drastic. And you know what? Very well could be. So what we want to do then to thin it out just a little bit more, another drop of thinner medium. So then the paint itself will be more translucent. And as it dries, it's going to be layering on top of the previous color and it will start taking all the magic will occur after that. So here we go. I'm going to do the same here on this, on this figure with the first highlight. Just hitting the, the top edges where the light's hitting. Hopefully you guys can see this. A lot of times I have to imagine where the light is going to be hitting. You know, where where is it going to be the lightest at? And so if I don't necessarily see it on the figure from the base coat, if if I applied something too dark at some point with the, the base washes, well then I will just create that highlight by painting a light onto it. See right there, hoping you can see. You can see a difference already in uh, the, the dark medium and then the lighter tone. This is not going to be the last highlight of this uniform. I'm going to go one more, possibly two more. So you get the picture. Let me finish this and I'll come back to you and show you what it looks like after the second highlight. Okay. The second highlight has been applied and you can start seeing already the differences in the tones of the, the, the folds versus the shadow areas. And definitely though, I want to go even more and add more highlights to this. So to avoid what a lot of people do is then they will just take drops of white and uh, start adding it to this color next. And in my opinion, that is not the right step. Uh, at least that's not the right step that I would do because white can make things a lot chalky or chalkier. So for this, I use a Reaper Master Series. I believe this is called Maiden Flesh. This is a lighter color than the Dark Sand and our Old Wood mix. It does have some white in it but it will give us, it will start giving us some differences rather quickly with this next highlight where the sun or the light is hitting the most. And uh, you can see right here, this is, well, this was the base color. This is the first highlight. Now this is the second highlight. So I'll do the same thing. Take my handy dandy brush get this in focus for you guys and start hitting the folds where I want the highest highlights and I'll probably go one more right after this because I know that the shades the uh, washes that I will be applying will darken this uh, and actually make it look perfect but uh, so I'll, I'll do one more see right there God, I hope you can see this. Right there, there is a difference in tone and highlights uh, on the top of the folds. I know I'm getting pretty anal with this, but this is this is what happens to me inside my head when I'm painting. And this is what I keep looking at and uh, try to push myself to achieve even more uh, gradations at a quicker pace without doing wet blending 
or something that takes a really long time for you know applying each layer and very thin waffa thin coats of uh, paint I don't have that time for painting war game figures the 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 masters the artists they can do that they have that luxury I don't so I'm gonna finish this up you can see I think right here hopefully the differences with the light hitting the top parts here see right here versus I haven't really done anything on this figure on this side of this arm so I'm gonna finish this up with this highlight and come right back okay getting this in focus so what have I done here I the last shading or the last highlight I, I did was the mixture of the uh, flesh maiden flesh and the dark sand with the old wood and this is what it looks like when it's dry so you, you can definitely tell there's a color gradations and changes in color now I am going to do one more highlight with this base color and it's going to be just strict straight uh, maiden flesh and I'm just going to be hitting just the highest points of the uniform to really accentuate that, that the highest highlight. Put this aside here. So I'm going to not even put it in the regular palette of what I've done already with all the color mixtures because I just want this to be a really good highlight. Mixing this up. So this is this is pretty light. Which is fine. I'm not putting a lot down. So let's take this. Dab on my little handy paper towel. And I'm looking to see for the extremes here. Where do I want the highest light hitting? I'll just do dabs. Just little dots. Nothing major. And this may be hard to see, so I apologize, but right there, top of the knee. Top of the elbow. Top of the arm, let's so get this back into focus. Then onto the combat shirt. I am accentuating the wrinkles on the combat shirt. So that's fine. So I think we are good with the final highlight of this. Yep, I'd say so. So I'm going to use a hair dryer, dry this real quick, and then I'll show you what I do on the plate carrier and the, the webbing. Okay, so this is dry. Let's start the web gear. I have to go back to my base color for the web gear, which is khaki and desert yellow. So I'm going to throw that down on my handy dandy plastic palette. I'm going to do two drops of khaki and one drop of the desert yellow I actually need more than that there we go add my thinner medium mix this up
I'm not going to put a lot of detail into the webbing because the ATEC camouflage, the nature of how I paint it, a lot of it will get covered up. But I can do like the, the top parts of these, the dump pouch here. Mag pouch. Carrier or groin armor or under the carrier. And I'm not re really doing a lot of highlights because a lot of the stuff, the way the folds are, uh, there's too much shadow in there. So I'm just going to go darker in those areas and pull out the difference with the other surrounding pieces of fabric and material with the highlights. One great thing that I, I do my best on is to accentuate our details, especially accentuate the details in the web gear, and uh, which helps us for painting. So try to make those areas even more raised so that you can see it when you paint it. So I guess, I, hopefully by now you guys get the hint of how I'm doing the highlights here on the, on the plate carrier. I didn't go too crazy. I, I didn't put a lot of detail into it. Uh, thankfully, just, just dots over the raised areas. I keep going back on the shoulder area because that's higher up. That's where the light's going to be hitting uh, towards the edge here of the groin protector. Okay, so I think we're good here. I'm going to use a hair dryer, dry this off, go to the next highlight. Be right back. Okay, I dried the first highlight on the web gear on the plate carrier. Get in focus. Hopefully, you can start seeing some differences. Also, what's most important is you can see the difference between the plate carrier color right there, plate carrier color versus the uniform color. That's very important to me because it's going to be two different camouflage patterns, two different base colors. Uh, and for me, that's very important to show the, 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 the differences. So I'm going to apply another highlight. And for this, I'm going to go just add one drop of desert yellow. So I'm trying to really kind of bring out the yellowish, the ochre part of the web gear. One more drop of thinner medium. Stir this up. So you can see the yellow is what is creating the highlight, not a white. And I don't want to use any creams right now because that may make it more look more similar to the uniform, the base uniform. So I'm adding yellow to it. Okay, so here we go. Just kind of hitting the, the ridges.
my own sanity to make things easier, I'm just painting the Kydex holster somewhat close color to the web gear. I will add some some shades or, and different highlighted colors to it to make a difference, to show a difference. But just for speed and to save time, I'm just uh, going to paint it the same color for right now. Now that, I can always add whites to uh, or grays, light, light gray, and that will break up that, that uh, highlight. It will also show the differentiation between the web gear, color of the web gear, and the color of the holster itself. You guys can see this. Reminds me, I need to, if I'm going to be making more of these videos, I need to trim down the brush handle because the brush handle, the edge of the brush handle is hitting the camera and the, the lights around me, so it's kind of a pain in the butt right now. So to hear a click, that's what it is. Okay, very cool. Very happy with how this looks right now. So again, you can really see the difference in colors. Not really putting a lot of pressure on the brush at all. Just dabbing. That's the other thing. When you have a really good brush, that brush it has a lot of good control over the paint. Uh, you don't have to put a lot of pressure. It's just dabs. And that paint will just take it. It'll just take it onto the, the, the figure. And that's the other reason why I like these, these figures is that the, the detail holds. The detail sculpted in here so well, the paint holds onto the detail. So it actually helps you paint. <laughs> okay. Let this dry, go to the next highlight. Okay, so here's another good example of having to go a little bit more with the highlights. You can start seeing it is changing, but I'm not happy with uh, the the highlights themselves, I mean, it's slowly getting there. So I'm going to use just straight desert yellow. Not put it part of the original color at all so that we have some more yellow coming out here. I'm going to add another drop of the thinner medium. Mix that up. And hopefully with this, to the eye you'll start to see the highlights more and again what I'm trying to do is just hit the raised areas of the web gear yeah that's much better much much better You can definitely tell the difference in tones now. Good. I tell you, you know, a lot of this is just experimenting. Uh, and, you know, that's what's great about painting in thin layers like this is that uh, if something doesn't work out the first time, you can always just try something else, you know, new, add, add some more color the original highlight to your base or like I says go outside of the whole base colors that you've used and just go to, with that highlight or the, that yellow 
and then voila you just start seeing a difference start edging out over here where the light is going to be hitting I apologize if it's going out of if the figure is going out of the, the view of the camera I have to keep reminding myself I'm videoing this because if it's just me I'm just painting like a madman somebody made a comment on the first video so the first thing you do is uh, go insane and I completely agree okay very happy Not doing a lot of highlights around here. Might maybe just bring out just a little bit on this side here. This is still going to get darkened with the shades. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. A lot of times when I want to start making sure things are broken up from the uniform, like the shirt, I'll just start using some edging, edge highlights here. And I might, and I will, accentuate it, that those edges with a highlighted color, more of a, uh, a, a lighter, whiter, or in this case, yellow. I'm not going to add any kinds of whites to the highlight of this at all. Because I don't want it to look like this uniform here. That's the, that's the problem, what a lot of people do, is that they add more whites or creams, thinking that, okay, yeah, I'm highlighting it. Well, yes, you are. But now, all of a sudden, everything looks the same. And uh, uh, personally, that's not what I'm trying to go after, go for, and uh, you know that was the purpose of these videos, to show you how I paint and achieve the effects I do. Okay. Pretty happy. With this, I'm going to do one more highlight, and then we are done with the highlights of the uniform. Okay, everything's dry, and now I want to apply my final highlight for this web gear. As I mentioned before, I'm not going to add any whites or, or any creams to this. But what I am going to do is use one of my little secret weapons here. This is Vallejo Model Color Ice Yellow. This is not uh, white. It's not. Cr it's a creamish yellow. But that yellow is going to add to the yellow that we're having here and make it highlighted. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna add a lot because this is a. This is. This can be powerful. There you go. Now, as I mentioned before, if it's too light, then I can always make the paint thinner by adding more thinner medium to it. Let's see, there you go. Right away, you can see the difference. Yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty yellow compared to that, and that's fine because I want it to be because this is just for the extreme highlights. This is not going to go over everything. What I'm trying to do is just make something look like it's popping out. And that's what this is going to do. So, like this. Again, get this guy in focus. And just run it right up here. There is a difference. Now, some people may think, oh my God, that's really, 
that's really uh, bright or that's really a highlight. Yes, it is. But again, I need to remind you that the washes that I'm going to be applying will tone that down. Took me a while to really understand the different colors to use for highlighting and shading and not just adding white, not just adding, I don't know, black for, for shading to colors or, um, it's a lot of it is playing with color and a lot of it is seeing what color is going to go well when mixed with another color. And I've had a lot of failures lessons and I've had a lot of successes. This is perfect. This is all I'm really wanting to do. I might edge this a little bit more here. Okay, almost done. Here's that I, what I was talking about with edging. Just putting the, the brush on the edge. And again, when you have a really good brush, such as this one's or Newton, you have control. You can do it with that brush because the brush itself, uh, it's a clean brush and the point is maintained. I think I forgot these little pouches here. So here, just dots. Nothing fancy, nothing difficult. So there you have it. God, I hope you can see this. Get my light going here. So there you have it. We have painted the highlights of the uniform. We've painted the highlights of the web gear. And this is all prepared us now for painting the actual multicam pattern itself, which is going to be a lot of fun. And I hope to take the stress and worry out of the process and, how, and show you guys how easy it is to do it. Just takes a little learning, just takes some time, but it's, it is easy. So, okay, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.